Welcome back to another Reaction Monday. And I want to do something that I did about a month ago when I also did the other two bands that I did earlier than this video. And because a few people in the comments said that they would like some more of this, it's not going to go very long because there's not many of these. <laughs> But I'm going to pull out another little gem for maybe those non-Dream Theater diehards that don't know, just like a lot of people, which I was kind of surprised. A lot of people said, wow, this is the first time I've ever seen this version of To Live Forever. And I was like, surprised because Live in Tokyo is probably the biggest besides like Metropolis 2000 and stuff like that. Live in New York is probably the biggest first anyway biggest video recording of dream theater and it makes sense in another way because a lot of people didn't become dream theater fans until after the metropolis train of thought era so they wouldn't maybe necessarily go back that far but to me live to, to live forever such an amazing song and so we're going to do another kind of gem that maybe some people don't know about i'd actually think that there'd be more people that would not know this little gem than the people that didn't know To Live Forever, Jim. <laughs> uh, and this is, I would say, not one of Dream Theater's or my favorite like technical songs. To me, this is one of Dream Theater's great ballad songs. It's not, there's nothing really hugely technical about it, but it's just a beautiful, absolutely beautiful song. And James Labrie is the one who wrote the lyrics for it. And I think he did an amazing job even with the lyrics. Once again, Dream Theater is not only good musically uh, in the way they construct their songs technically and uh, melodically, but I th also think one thing that sets Dream Theater apart from other bands in their genre or other genres is like at least 60 to 70% of their songs are very practical in lyrics and very well done lyrically, surprisingly. They, of course, they have their misses. Of course, they have their cheesy songs and like, what the hell are they talking about? But that's 60 to 70% of your songs to be well-written lyrically and good subject matter is almost found nowhere, anywhere in music, not just, you know, prog rock. But in most genres, the lyrics are the worst. They're stupid. They don't, they're just, they actually tackle consistently interesting subjects and topics and they write it pretty well. Uh, and stanza form in the way that people can understand the idea that they're trying to get across. So without further ado, let's get into Speak to Me. I've said this before, I love Portnoy's hair. Like short like this, I think he looks good with the frost, the frost look. I don't like James' hair here. He looks kind of weird. <laughs> John Myung never changes. Now I will say Portnoy's backing vocals here sound pretty good. James, when he goes high here, sounds great. I love that. It's very U2 ish. Uh, John Petrucci with the old Picasso Ibanez. can't sing but I just love this song so much to sing to specifically I love Portnoy's face right there it's like what's he looking at <laughs> maybe you saw a hot chick in the crowd here we go with the bass drum three four there he 
Jerry's looking at James like, are we on the same pitch? <laughs> Good job, Portnoy. This is such a U2 song. Such a great song. Just like U2 songs are great. Down, boys. I love how he's like, turn it down. <laughs> so easy. So easy, easy. Whoa. Go, Portnoy. So easy, Good. Easy, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, such a great song. The way they build. How can Dream Theater fans not like this side of Dream Theater? I just don't understand. This is what makes Dream Theater so fucking awesome. Is they do heavy shit and then they do this kind of stuff. It's so awesome. See, my dogs like it too. Breakdown. Derek, even though he's not playing anything really difficult, is always like... <laughs> There's one thing that's funny about his showmanship. much really to say other than pretty straightforward U2 sounding song that I think is beautifully well constructed, more of a poppy digestible song that is what makes Dream Theater Dream Theater and I love it. This is one of the reasons why I love them and if you haven't seen this song before, Once in a Lifetime actually has a lot of these little gems so maybe we'll get into some of those later. Uh, but I just love this song and it's one of the gems that I thought hey this would be another one that we can listen to if you haven't heard the song hopefully you liked it uh, be interested in the comments below if you like the song or this is the kind of dream theater that you hate and you just detest and can't listen to uh, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and we'll see you maybe in a month or so for another dream theater gem as always like and subscribe see you next week for new reactions peace <laughs>